Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Sunday afternoon. Taking a look at the next week's slate in the matchup I'm by far most excited for. The Washington Huskies heading on the road to Corvallis, playing the Oregon State Beavers. And what intrigues me the most about this matchup, both of these programs playing, I think, at some of their highest level that you've seen all year, right? The Washington Huskies may be an ugly first half against Utah on the defensive side of the ball. You take a look at what they did in the second half, absolutely dominant. And then Oregon State. I mean, this is a team that it's not flashy, doesn't get a ton of national media attention, but they keep on winning games. I think DJU is playing his best football of the year. Really excited to get into this one. Massive Pac-12 implications. Before we get into it, just want to say thank you to you guys and a special shout out to the Pac-12 fans. This is a, a conference. That kept me up till 2.30 a.m. last night, Eastern time. It's been electric all year. We said it hadn't in. This conference would be, it's going to be fun to watch. It certainly has delivered. The Pac-12 fans, you guys have showed a ton of support to the boys. So if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And more importantly, throw your picks and predictions in the comment section. We'll chop it up there. Dill, going to give you the tee box here. Huskies, Oregon State, how are we feeling? And I was going to, you took the words right out of my mouth in like a week that is a very boring kind of week of college football, I'd say, where a lot of big dogs are, I don't want to say they're taking the week off, but they're kind of taking the week oh, off. Oh, it's exactly what they're doing. The SEC conference, yeah, taking the week off, not the Pac 12. No weeks off in the Pac 12. Washington, Oregon State, top 15 matchup. Yeah. And they're coming to save the day. And, and you're right. This is like, what Oregon State's built themselves up into, what Washington's built themselves up into, two programs that, again, just playing awesome football all year. And, and, and they do it a little different ways, obviously, with what Oregon State liking to keep it on the ground and play some bully ball. And I don't want to say Washington can play a little bully ball, too. They can run the football okay. But obviously they want to they want to throw it with Penix. Yeah, maybe. you want you want the football in the hands of Michael Penix. And that's the, the first thing I'm on my note sheet I have. Kind of a battle of different styles. Like Oregon State running the ball 55% of their offensive snaps. Washington throwing the football 60% of their offensive snaps. Both offenses can get it done just in different ways. I want to start with the Oregon State offense going up against a Washington defense that, again, I, I feel like a lot of people have a misconception that this defense stinks. Like, Is it the strong suit of this team? Absolutely not. The strong suit is Michael Penix throwing the football, putting up points. But you look at the defense, I mean, the numbers are pretty solid, only allowing 23 and a half points per game. That's 44th in the country. And particularly in the second half of that Utah game, I mean, that was absolutely dominant. Two interceptions, a safety, and four three and outs in the second half. I think Utah had one drive where they gained a first down in the second half. Dominant performance. But still, you look at this Oregon State offense, and not a lot of people are going to talk about it, but I'm going to read to you is going to surprise a lot of people. 36 points per game. That is 14th in the country. 6.8 yards per play. That is 8th in the country. And a lot of top metrics, this Oregon State offense is not only one of the best in the Pac-12, but one of the best in the country. They are absolutely cooking on offense. And what's going to be the tough part, I think, for Washington to deal with in terms of what Oregon State's going to do is the recipe that Utah kind of used, which was run the football and go for deep shots off of play action. And that obviously worked at times. You saw them hit Valet for that deep pass. I mean, Oregon State does that far better than what Utah kind of yeah. they, they have a better offensive line. They run the ball better. And obviously, DJU, what he's done since coming over from Clemson, he's playing at like, I mean, he'll be an NFL draft pick, I think, not a super high draft pick, but he's going to get picked next year in Gould and in. And they're very, very good players. Gould and Silas Bolden are awesome. And like, you look at what Oregon State wants to do. I mean, five and a half yards per carry. That's 13th in the country. Last week against Stanford, they ran the ball for 277 total yards. Damian Martinez averaged 9.7 yards per carry. Deshaun Fenwick, 12.2. It's no secret what Oregon State wants to do. They want to run that stretch zone, maul people, get the football to the running back's hands. But when you want to put bodies in the box, that is what makes Oregon State different from last year. Last year, they didn't really have a quarterback to attack opposing defenses. They could run the ball, but they didn't have an elite quarterback. DJU playing at a high level. Another just a stat that I think kind of shows it. 
9.2 yards per pass attempt for this Oregon State offense. Yeah, they don't throw it that much, but when they do, it's one of the most explosive passing attacks that you see, and you noted it. Uh, Gold, Gould, Bolden, I mean, two guys that you do not want to get in space, and Oregon State does a great job at getting the football to those dudes in space. That'll be the challenge for Washington. Another aspect I thought they struggled with, especially in the first half, was tackling guys in space. And yes. You saw them rip off some huge, huge plays. But again, because Washington, when, when they're firing and they're doing their thing, what they do is create negative plays, and, and they back teams up. Obviously, their defensive ends with Trice and ZTF, extremely good. but. They are going to need to – they're going to be very challenged, I think, tackling essentially four guys with the two running backs and the two wideouts who all are big-time playmakers and can do a lot of different things. I think it boils down to Oregon State, can they establish the run? Because, like, you take a look at the recipe. If you want to stop this Washington Huskies offense and, and go and take care of a top-five team in the country, keeping Michael Penix off the field and establishing the run, limiting the amount of times Michael Penix can touch the football – that's going to favor Oregon State. Yes, they can keep up and win a shootout, but how Oregon State wants to do this is keep it on the ground, limit the amount of times Michael Penix gets to touch the football, and if they can do that, I mean, you got to feel good about them at home in Corvallis. Now, the Huskies, and that's the biggest thing that the Huskies, I think, have improved on is their defensive line is playing far better, especially yeah. those middle guys. I think last year they struggled, but I think Ali Ulumu is really, really good. I Gosh. like to – and they have a little more depth. Like they can roll some guys in who who can give them productive snaps. I thought they were last year. Thule was really the only guy who I was like, man, this guy you can really kind of depend on. But now you have probably three or four, and, and they're just playing at a far higher level than, than what they had, what they did. Eight like. eight tackles, eight uh, eight quarterback errors, eight quarterback hits. They had multiple tackles for a loss against Utah. That's kind of the recipe for the Washington Huskies. And I'll say it, Braylon Trice. I mean, maybe a slow start to the start of the season. No, I, I reject that notion. I think people are looking at sack numbers. If you watch these games, he is in the backfield constantly. I don't care it, what it he's been he's been ramping it up as of late. Maybe it maybe the expectations and maybe I'm just missing it too. Maybe he was just awesome and I am being a box score watcher. But Braylon Trice has been awesome the last couple of weeks. ZTF coming into zone and then uh Jacob Blaine, true freshman from the 2023 class, also playing some good football. Really excited. I mean, the story of this matchup is can Oregon State run the football on the Washington Huskies now? Well, we went seven minutes, 30 seconds, breaking down this game. We didn't mention the best player on the football field. Michael Penix and this Washington Huskies offense, 45 points per game, number five in the country, 7.7 yards per play. That's number two in the country. Dale, Michael Penix, 332 yards, two touchdowns against the Utah defense that I think is one of the best units in the country. How do we see the Washington Huskies matching up against this Oregon State defense here? I think the fundamental challenge for what Oregon State will probably deal with is do they have that high-level impact player on their defense that's going to make the plays I think you need to make when you play Washington? Because there's just – I mean, there's nothing you can do to really just stop this team outright, I don't think. And, and they've had some sluggish games, but when they're playing their best, I just don't see how you have any real answers – consistently especially as they've started to run the ball a little bit better in their offensive line like they're showing they can kind of run in between the tackles when they're doing that and they were doing that especially in the first half against utah they're really tough to deal with dylan johnson running for over i mean obviously we know what he did against usc dog performance but that's usc against the utah front seven that's one of the best units stopping the run dylan johnson goes for over 100 yards and yeah, they want to throw the football, but having that second dynamic that they didn't really have last year has been a huge, huge kind of focal point for this Washington Husky offense. It's truly a two-dimensional offense. My biggest takeaway, like I knew Roman Duzne was a guy. I knew Michael Penny. Like I wasn't surprised that those guys made plays to win a football game this Saturday. What I was most uh, pleased with, I would say, is this Washington offensive line was awesome against Utah and Utah has a very good front seven. They were top 10 in the country in sacking the quarterback, Michael Penix, obviously doing a phenomenal job getting the football out quick, but on aggregate, this Washington offensive line against probably the best front seven they'll see in the pac 12 really did a nice job holding their own up there. I mean, Troy Fatanu at left. Back, awesome. I think is probably the first guy I've seen really handle Alex, Alex. for that. Yeah. Play defensive line and, and, and they weren't giving him a ton of help either i mean he was just out there doing his thing he's got like a little bit 
of an un unorthodized look. Doesn't look like he's that big, long tackle you see, but very good athlete, very strong. And, and he's been he's been a rock all year, and that's obviously been really both their tackles, frankly, have just played really well. And, and when you give Penix time, he's just, I mean, he's cutting you up. And frankly, when you don't give Penix time, he's so composed. He gets the ball out quick, too. He's just, I mean, again, everyone knows this, but they're just so hard to hard. To I, I, I talked about the offensive line in particular because this Oregon State defensive line, and you mentioned it, do they have that top, that first round NFL draft pick, that top 15 guy? They do in Talisi Fuaga on the uh, offensive side of the ball and defense. It's much more of a team approach. But that front seven, like, gets behind the line of scrimmage, right? 12 tackles for a loss against Stanford, six sacks, four interceptions. You take a look at some of the keys for this matchup. One, the Washington Huskies, when they get in trouble, when they have those sluggish games, they, they struggle on first and second down. Getting into those third and long situations, can Oregon State create some tackles for a loss, negative plays to force Washington into those third and longs, and the second one, and obviously going to play a role as it always does, turnovers. Oregon State, phenomenal turning the ball over against Stanford. A couple keys for me that I'm looking at. Dill, let's get to the pick here. The Huskies heading on to Corvallis. It's a what a Washington one and a half point favorite, kind of a pick them here. Who are you riding with? I think I got the Huskies, and I know Corvallis is a brutal, brutal place to play, but I just think the way this Washington team's playing, they're gutting out wins again. Have they looked good every game? No, but like being 10 and 0 is being 10 and 0. If you yes. can find your ways to win your football games, that, that's what they're doing. I think that is the mark of a good team if you're the type of team that you know needs to play your a ball every game to win washington can do that i just think they're far more complete i and, and honestly just for oregon state i struggle to see who's gonna like take this game over on defense or have that sort of game that i think you need to have somebody needs to have to slow this washington team down i hate doing this man I, I, you, everyone knows how I feel about this Washington team. I think Michael Penix is a stud. I think Roman Duzne is arguably the, the best, maybe even second best outside of Marvin Harrison Jr. wide receiver in the country. Where has Washington struggled? It struggled on the road. They're playing in the one of the most hostile environments in the Pac 12 in Corvallis, a, a place where Oregon State, I've been a dummy too many times picking against Oregon State. In Corvallis, still, I'm going to ride with the Beavers here at home. I've been burned too many times in the past picking against Oregon State at home. Not doing it here. Give me Oregon State to pull the upset. This is going to be a phenomenal game. Like I, I, It's going to be one of those barn burners, I think. And I'm going to ride with Oregon State at home again. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate all the support you guys have shown the boys. And we'll talk to you all later.